Guys, AC here. Welcome to another review. I am on a bit of a spree at the moment and uh, I thought I'd do a review of Creed, um, which doesn't get a lot of talk, you see. So this one, Creed Tabor Rome. Now, this inherits the name of an earlier Creed, which was released back in 1873. And there's a lot of misconception when it comes to Creed Tabor Rome. This version of Creed Tamarone, which is widely available, was released in 2000. The misconception is that the, the ancient version used to be worn by Winston Churchill and apparently there was a very, very heavy tobacco, oak moss and leather in that fragrance. It was a very manly old-fashioned juice, which is why I guess people don't talk about this Tamarone a lot. So let me help you understand this version of Tabaron. So as I said, released in 2000, it was uh, created by Oliver Creed, sixth generation Creed. And let's start with the spray. I've got a 5ml decant, I've given it a few wearings and I've enjoyed every single wearing. It's quite a decent Creed and I hope the this Creed gets a bit of popularity because it's quite a fine Creed. Okay, when you first spray it, it's a whole host of things that hit your nose all at the same time. And it's very, very different, very unique than a creed. It also smells like a designer. So what you get is mandarin, very creamy ambergris. Mandarin, ambergris is very sour. And combine that with bergamot. Signature creed um, DNA, if you like. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so at this point, it's very clean, slightly sour, very attractive, very soft, very gentle. Uh, that's the nature of the fragrance. This will change very quickly in about 10 minutes time. In about 10 minutes time, the fragrance becomes very clean, plus it develops some sort of a herbal greenness. And it also becomes stronger. Sometimes I also get vibes of green pepper, as if, you know, when you have a salad and you you chop a, uh, a green bell pepper, that sort of smell, you know, slightly peppery green smell. Apparently there's tea in this fragrance, but I don't get too much tea. Well, the tobacco that you smell up front, yeah, this uh, very uh, clear and present green tobacco. Now there's another fragrance in my collection which uses green tobacco. There is absolutely no similarity. This one is a powerhouse, 80s type fragrance. This is very interesting um, and very manly. There's no similarity, but these are the only two fragrances I've smelled with green tobacco leaves. Now, <clears throat> the second transition, which happens in about five minutes, is when it reminds me of another fragrance which I have reviewed. It's Rasasi's Sotur Ta. And the fragrance keeps reminding me for about the next two hours of Sotur Ta. So check out, I've reviewed this one. But after that, the fragrance changes direction. Tabarome changes direction. I've got a four and a half hour dry down. And this is when the fragrance really creates the impression of a very suave, very polished gentleman. That's why I said, you know, this could be a very fine gentleman's signature scent. Uh, such a beautiful fragrance, very good natured really classy. So what you smell here is a browned up tobacco. So this is this is not dry at all. This is very minty and peppery and mentholic. This one is quite dry, refined, fine tobacco with embellished sandalwood, very soft and beautiful sandalwood with musk and ambergris, the signature Creed ambergris. And it's also very sour as compared to what you what you get in the opening. So, sa, uh, beautiful sandalwood, very, very nice ambergris, one of the finest ambergris, uh, along with a really nice fine tobacco. But the tobacco play, starts playing peekaboo, you know. This is the longevity of the fragrance is quite, quite high, about eight to ten hours. And sometimes you uh, smell the tobacco, sometimes you don't smell the tobacco. In the very late dry down, which is, which is a third transition, you also get a very mentholated uh, sort of a sheet, you know, uh, like a very clean, freshly ironed bed sheet. 
folded it in and put into the cupboard. That sort of a lavender-like smell with eucalyptus oil sprayed on it. I was very amazed by that because there is no use of eucalyptus or lavender. So it does smell of a mentholated, clean sheet. Very late dried out, about nine plus hours. That tells you about the longevity. So such a fine fragrance, guys. Starts off lemony, mandarin, slightly sour, green tobacco. Then goes into sort of herbal deep. It, it grows in concentration, herbal deep scent. Uh, which smells of green pepper, although um, briefly, and brings in notes like tea, I don't get it, um, sandalwood and ambergris and musk, and then goes into dry, sort of sour ambergris with sandalwood and some fine tobacco, then mentholated eucalyptus uh, oil sprinkled over a dry sheet. So, beautiful journey, if you like. And this is one of those green fragrances that should be getting a lot of talk because it's complex, lasts a long time, it's beautifully crafted. And the other thing about this fragrance, let's cover that in pros and cons. So pros and cons. Number one, the blending is perfect. One of the most finely blended fragrances. It's really hard work trying to pick up the notes. Yeah? And you smell everything right from start to finish with different iterations. As I said, the tobacco starts going up and down. I don't get any leather, leather has been mentioned. Apart from leather, I get everything. And there's no mention of eucalyptus oil, and I know the smell of eucalyptus oil very well, and I get that in the late dry down. So blending is absolutely perfect. The second pro of this fragrance is the composition. It's a very unique creed. Well, all creeds are unique, but this one is more like a creed. It lasts a long time, it's creative, it's very elegant, and it, you know, it's not heavy. In spite of using heavy notes like tobacco, sandalwood, um, leather apparently, it's not a heavy fragrance. It's very variable. And the fourth, I would say, um, pro is it's very variable all around the year. You wouldn't have to think. This can be a signature scent, hence the title of my video. In terms of downsides, guys, the only thing is typical of every creed, almost every creed, is lack of projection. This sits close to the skin and also it has low sillage or maybe low to medium sillage. But the uniqueness of the fragrance and the understated elegance of this fragrance, I would say, probably demands it. You don't want a screamer when you're trying to wear something which is very elegant, very sophisticated. Yeah, This is for a very classy uh, gentleman yeah? who dresses really well who has tremendous self-confidence but speaks uh, only when spoken to, that kind of stuff, you know, never speaks out of turn, is not very screechy or loud, has impeccable manners. That's the kind of personality of the scent. I've covered everything, I think age groups, I don't think this fragrance has any stipulated age group, anybody can wear this. As long as you dress and behave as a gentleman should, you should be fine. Marks out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The only reason I'm removing two marks is obviously it won't appeal to everybody who likes their fragrances to project and the Creed price point against the price performance ratio is slightly skewed towards low. But if you're a Creed lover and if you don't have this in your collection, this would be a fabulous addition to your collection. Hope you like this review fellas. Take care.